Well, there he is on the automobile transport, all in a day's work for a movie actor, in which at times you have to be your own stunt person, I assume, Mel. Yeah, but nothing dangerous, you know. Well, what about that? I, how much are you willing to talk to the press, for example, about what scenes you're in and what scenes you're not in? Well, it doesn't matter. I mean, I'm never in anything dangerous. So. Really? That, that was safe. That was very safe. Okay. Was there ever a moment, however, in any of the sequences maybe where it was a little edgy? Um, well, you get a little cuts and scratches and bruises, but I mean, really, um, you, you simply can't do that. I mean, uh, um, they'd never be able to uh, claim the money they've squandered from the <laughs> insurance company if, if I end up splattered someplace. So it, it was, you know, very experienced stunt crew. But I'm going to do a little what if thing with you, if I may. What if you had gone in that direction? Would you have been a stunt man? Would you have wanted to be? Would you have been a good one? No. Mm -hmm. I don't like heights. And, uh, yeah, that's a prerequisite, isn't and it? I, I, a good stuntman is um, one who um, doesn't take a chance. And, and the guy who worked on, uh, on, on Lethal 2, uh, he doesn't take that many chances. He'll jump off 11 stories and stuff, but he really calculates it. I mean, mm -hmm. there's a very narrow margin for missing the mattress. Uh, Let's well, let's call this kind of movement then, instead of stunting, a sort of choreography of movement. Yeah. And believe it or not, I'm getting to Shakespeare and all of this because you've done Shakespeare a lot and you've got some coming up, and mm -hmm. that means duels and lots of movement like that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go back to, what is it, Romeo and Juliet? You did Mercutio some time ago? No, I did Romeo. And Mercutio, no, but not the same production. Yeah, <laughs> I never did Mercutio. But I see. Okay, so you were dueling then, was this a high school production? No. It was um, uh, on, the on the professional stage. Okay. Dueling yeah. instruction? Oh, yeah. Okay. Now, what about that? There are the movements choreographed, possibly a bit dangerous with the blades. Yeah. Well, I, I did fencing for a couple of years. So, and, and not only fencing, just to, you know, normal fencing, but fencing um, instruction for stage work and so on. So, mm -hmm. And I, I like that. I find that kind of stuff interesting. Now, as your Hamlet project uh, is under consideration, are you at all haunted by the uh, image of Olivier flying through the air in that 12-foot leap? I mean, no. Are you going to go and maybe in that direction a little bit? I don't know yet. I don't know. I see. I, I, I feel pretty good. I mean, uh, Shakespeare on film is, uh, he wrote for the stage, you know, so Shakespeare on film is, is kind of a problem already. Um, but if you can get that right, and I think you know, because we're doing it with Franco Zeffirelli, uh, and he's he's done it twice quite well, <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh, um, I feel pretty good there. But after that, then there's the the only other thing you have to do is to make it accessible to a contemporary audience, and that's that's what we're going to have a crack at. Because mm -hmm. if you can't do that, then it's not worth it. Okay. Now let's get back to Lethal Weapon too. The uh, camaraderie with you and Danny. Yeah. It looks so real on screen. I guess we'd like to believe that in real life the two of you are great friends. What about the relationship the two of you have off screen? Off screen, great. I mean, uh, uh, there's nothing not to like about Danny. He's a nice fella. Mm -hmm. And he's a good actor. Uh, so that there's a measure of respect there as well. And I, I get the feeling that he feels the same. So it's like, it's nice. It's, it's, and it's good to work with him. He's really good to work with. And as a result, do you bring something to him then uh, to counterbalance something he brings to you? Are the two of you Absolutely. a good match that way? Yeah, yes. For example? Well, I think that happens in, within the characters. Yeah. I mean, that's how they grow. That's how they change. Which is to say, you give him an edge he might not have. Yes. And, and what does he give you then? Uh, a, uh, uh, he gives me a more, each kind of, I, I steady down a little. Um, I, I don't want to kill myself anymore, for instance. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a life. I live in his house. <laughs> <laughs> I like his family. Right. Um, and cook dinner. So uh, it's a, a, a good relationship. And I, I guess um, in, in situations like in war situations, or police, I guess, too, th those people don't necessarily even have to like each other. But because they have to depend on each other, then a, a kind of a strong bond develops. Now, in the body of your work, we do have the contrasts of pictures like Mrs. Sofal yeah. and this and the Mad Max pictures. Do you ever have a feeling of regret at all that something like a Mrs. Sofal couldn't be a bigger hit when it maybe should have been 
No. And something like this obviously is. I mean, uh, it's always it's really gratifying, and and uh, if, if a lot of people go and see something, but hey, too bad if they don't. You know, there must have been something they didn't like about it, but you know, mm -hmm. I, I'm, phew, there's no regret. You don't feel that I got paid. <laughs> <laughs> you don't feel that there's some kind of a an inability of audiences to accept you in a more mild, restrained kind of role. Then. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'll try it. Are you in a position now in your career where you can say, for this project, I do want to keep a tone down, I do want to play a character more like a Hamlet? I mean, can you have some say in those kinds of decisions? Oh, absolutely. I okay. mean, but, but from the beginning, it, it has been so. Um, for for um, uh, people who are truly good to work with, they want your input. They, they want you to um, express what you think so that you can talk about it. And if they think you're way off beam, they'll talk you out of it and they'll give you good reasons. Yeah. Finally, <coughs> all the stories about how kind of off the wall you are on the sets, those are all exaggerated, aren't they? Yeah, that's total bull. You're actually very I restrained. I have no sense of humor. And, right. uh, Tea time at four. That's it. Yeah. No dancing, no music. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Okay. Good to see you again, Mel Gibson. Yeah. <laughs> he is in Lethal Weapon, too. We're both in Vancouver, British Columbia. I'm John Tibbetts for KCTV5.